I'm Ross Halleck with Halleck Vineyard. And this is Harrod Sweiner. Uh, I'm the director of sales here at Halleck Vineyard. And we're here again to uh, explore this, uh, take, explore this adventure of tasting the wines that you care most about. And how we're discovering that is by going to Google, uh, we call it Mother Google, and seeing what people are interested in. And we are interested in what are the most sought after Pinot Noirs in the United States and where do we fit in that? So we today we are tasting. Oh, well, today we're tasting the Mark West Pinot Noir, um, the Aerith Pinot Noir, the Elowen Pinot Noir, and our very own Three Sons Cuvée Pinot Noir. And uh, they are all 2018 vintages, except we were not able to get a 2018 of the, um, of the era. So it is a 2019, but uh, the prices have all, uh, are all the same from, from vintage to vintage. And uh, just to uh, be clear, the Mark West Springs is the little brother of all of this at 1099 a bottle. And uh, you'll be quite surprised what we learn about that. And then the Elowen and Arath are both $24.99. And of course, our Three Sons Pinot Noir is double that at $49.99. Well, at $49, sorry. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and taste these wines and see, see what we think. That sounds great. So we're starting with the Mark West today. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Well, first let's let's look at the color of this wine. It is um, a beautiful ruby, uh, deep ruby, translucent. Uh, it's your classic uh, and beautiful Pinot Noir color. And uh, the nose is quite promising. Yes. How would you describe the nose? Uh, it's got big cherry notes, a lot of cinnamon spice. Yeah, cherry and cinnamon is absolutely leads the way. It's very promising. This is a, you know, Smells delicious. Let's give it a taste. Well, first, wow. this wine certainly leads with those dark cherry notes. It is also dry. So for those of you who are interested in dry versus sweet, I will tell you straight up, all of these wines are dry. And how would you describe this? Well, it uh, basically is the same notes on uh, the nose. Big cherry, a little bit of spice. There's there's some um, you know hinting at a little bit of burgundy and earthiness, but not not a ton. Mm -hmm. It's basically what I was led to expect from the nose. But I'm I'm pretty impressed for for the price point. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed. At ten ninety nine, I would buy this wine every day. Honestly, this is fantastic. Um, it's got uh, that hint of earthiness on the palate. There are no holes in it. It goes front, middle, back. Um, it has a nice finish. Uh, the, the 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 spice leads to the finish. Um, there's a hint. I mean, if I'm going to do anything, you know, I mean, even my own wines, you know, there's always something that's a little wrong with it. There's not much wrong with this wine, but there is a little bit of um, bitterness on the back end, the far back end. It starts to starts to get a little bitter. But, you know, with food, this would be, you know, you'd never notice that. Yeah. And more to that point, I think, you know, part of that spice, it's almost has like a kind of a red hot effect that leads mm -hmm. into the back of the throat and then it turns into a bitterness. But again, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a slight, right? <laughs> yeah, really. This is this is a really quite quite a great wine and yeah. an incredible value. Um, it's not tremendously complex. Um, I might I mean, Thanksgiving's coming up. Mm -hmm. I would definitely have this with turkey um, or chicken or pork, the lighter meats. It's a um, it's a delicate wine. It's not in your face but it's beautifully made. Okay. All right, so now we're moving from uh, California. So the Mark West, it says it's mostly from the Central Coast, mm -hmm. uh, although the Appalachian itself says, or sorry, um, the AVA itself says uh, California. So yeah. they do make some Carneros wines I've heard, but we were unable to find some, unfortunately. So all of these wines, except for ours, are, are whole state at, at, um, AVAs. So the, the uh, Mark West is California and the two Oregon Pinot Noirs are Oregon. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the difference in flavor profiles between Oregon and, the, and California in a few minutes. So moving on to the, uh, this is the era. Mm -hmm. Oh, how about the color? It's um, oh, yeah. definitely purplier than the other one we yeah. were just trying. It's pretty. It is. It's, it's translucent as well. Definitely leads more towards the purple. You know where the other one was was you know deep dark uh, 
garnet or ruby. This is this is definitely leading to, towards purple, but it still is translucent and has a beautiful Pinot Noir character. So what's the um, the alcohol content on this one? Uh, this one is uh, thirteen percent. And oh, good point. The the last one, the Mark West, was thirteen point five percent. So I ask because sometimes that higher alcohol, you know, you can see it in the deeper, more saturated color. Mm -hmm. But this does not. This is a, yeah, a low surprising. alcohol. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So the aroma is pretty one note for me. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely like a blackberry character. It's very fruity, mm -hmm. although it is hinting at that um, that blackberry candy that maybe kind of taffy even flavor that I'm mm -hmm. not so huge on. But it's not it's not too harsh. Mm -hmm. And the as soon as you taste it, there's the 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 the, the fruit notes give way to this sort of brambly earthy mm -hmm. note. Um, it isn't your classic Pinot Noir earthy. It's it's like you said, more like yeah. underbrush. It's got a, you know, it's 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 um, yeah. I'd say bramble is a good good term well, for it. And I think we could think of it as bramble in a couple ways because mm -hmm. it's, it's bramble in the sense that it smells like underbrush, but it also kind of has a sharp acidity to it that, that mm -hmm. kind of pokes you a little bit. It's not super well integrated. Mm -hmm. That's true. And there is a touch of bitterness on the finish. I think mm -hmm. just a touch. Mm -hmm. So not not a bad wine by any means. Um, no. The mouthfeel is uh, medium as well, but a little thicker than the Mark West, I would say. Mm -hmm. What would you pair with this? I think this is, um, I, this would take a, a little bit uh, bigger of, a, um, of a, a pairing. I would say a hanger steak would go well with this, or if you're pairing with cheese, maybe an aged Gouda or a Pirano, um, both beautiful cheeses and, and really rich, and I think would pair well with this wine. Mm, I wonder if a smoke good would work. If that smoke character would pair, mm, that I would be know. kind of interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah, smoke good isn't one of my favorites because that smokiness is so powerful. But it's a favorite of many. I, I would be willing to give it a go yeah. with it. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to our Elowan. Now this this stands out as quite different from the rest as soon as you look at it. Wow. Yeah, that is deep and purple. That is opaque. So this is an opaque purple. This looks more like a Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. And when you put it up to your nose, it is um, kind of a, a rich, meaty, stewed fruit aroma. Uh, yeah. and many people like this. Um, to me, this isn't a, a classic Pinot Noir uh, a set of characteristics at all. But uh, it, it doesn't mean it's not good. It's just not... Uh, it's not characteristic of Pinot Noir and, and, you know, not one of my favorites, but uh, there are plenty of, um, there's plenty, plenty of people who like that stewed fruit component in Pinot Noir. Yeah, stewed fruit and meatiness, I think it's right. And it's, it's a pretty big nose as well. Um, what's the alcohol content on this one compared to the other Oregon one? Uh, this one, you know, I, in fact, I didn't check it. I oh, think it's, okay. I think it's 13%. 13% as well. Oh, so they're the same. I wouldn't have guessed that. Let me see. They are the same price as well. 13.7%. Oh, okay. So that's quite a bit more. Yeah, it's quite a bit more. Hmm. So this is the most alcoholic so far. And uh, maybe that's where the heat comes from on the nose. Yeah, there has... is a bit of that now. Mm -hmm. hmm. And... Um, on the palate, you get that stewed fruit for yeah, sure. It's very fruity. Mm -hmm. It's very lush as well. Mm -hmm. a, you know, nice body to it. Yeah, it, it's got a rich mouth feel. It doesn't um, punch you in the face as much as I was expecting. Like the nose is much no. bigger than the palate. It, it's you know, it's quite delicate in, in term. In, in fact, mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of floral notes in this. I would say um, violets come through on the mouth. Um, you know, just it's 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 surprisingly delicate for how dark it is and how 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 heavy it is in your mouth. I mean, it's, it's actually beautifully balanced. Um, there's nice acidity uh, to it, but not over the top um, and a nice long finish. Yeah, it's this actually, is um, much better integrated than the other one I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if the profile is not my favorite. Mm. So uh, we were debating about, you know, the pairings for this one. And I think that that violet note we mentioned, that floral aspect would be mm -hmm. really nice with um, Herbs de Provence, yeah. uh, which has lavender in it. So it'll play off of that. Maybe mm -hmm. with, um, I think we said salmon would be a good yeah, idea. Salmon yeah. would be nice. Or, you know, it's a, a, a simple steak, like a filet mignon that doesn't have a lot of, a lot of uh, fat to it. 
Um, it's delicate, and I think this would you know play very well with with a, with a fillet. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Oregon Pinot Noir versus Sonoma Pinot Noir. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me this question. And I, I'm never quite sure how to answer it. So would you take the lead on that one? Yeah, well, well, first let's let's put it, let's quantify it. Okay. You know, the, in terms of AVAs, uh, California has 139 AVAs. We're wow. talking the far north, uh, the north middle, the north coast, the um, central coast, the central valley, uh, the and, and Southern California. But you know, in all of those, there are 139 AVAs. Now you move over to um, Oregon. The entire state of Oregon has 18 AVAs. There are 18 AVAs just in Sonoma County. Wow. Now that includes Southern Oregon, Columbia Valley, Willamette Valley. So honestly, I think to compare California to Oregon is, uh, is chasing your tail. I, I don't think that it's possible to, to have some gross generalizations that work across these, 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 these vastly different growing regions. I think that there isn't a collective Oregon style, just like I don't think there is a collective California style. I think that you're just going to have to compare wine to wine and see which one you like. Well, and leading us into our next one, um, mm -hmm. you know, some of those Oregon AVAs are valleys. They're huge. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I think Columbia Valley goes across state lines into Washington mm -hmm. versus um, this wine is uh, just a single region, isn't it? Which, yeah. What's the AVA on this one? Uh, this The Three Sons is Russian River Valley, which is you know, quite small compared to uh, Columbia Valley. Yes, yes. So uh, this is our, what's the vintage on this one? This is a 2018. Wonderful. And it is um, our Three Sons Cuvée, of course, named after our three sons. Their names and ages are on the back of the bottle. And this one, gosh, I'm so surprised. This one leads right away with earth and fruit. I mean, yeah, I get- comparatively. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so interesting tasting yeah. this against other, other wines. And we rarely do this. So this wine- has a very, um, I would say, Burgundian nose. Uh, right out of the gate, it has that sauvage or animal, the, um, that sort of, uh, I would call it feral note, mm -hmm. but it's heavily balanced with dark cherries. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as you keep your nose in the glass, you get a lot of those wonderful baking spice notes mm -hmm. that yeah. um, we were enjoying previously. Yeah. Um, and then that classic Pinot Noir flavor, that uh, that forest floor, which mm -hmm. is meant to evoke, you know, the scent that comes up when you're walking through a forest. And mm -hmm. you really get it in spades in this one. Mm -hmm. mm. And as you said in our last um, video, Harris, I think it's true, you know, any good wine, we're not talking about a great wine or an award-winning wine, delivers on the promise of the nose. And this wine certainly does. Absolutely. I mean, the mouthfeel of this one, uh, I never think of our three sons as, as maybe the richest mouthfeels, but in comparison, it really fills them out beautifully. Mm -hmm. And this, um, what's the alcohol content on our three sons? 14 oh, something? Yeah, it's 14.1. It's, it's so it's oh, the highest. Yeah. Interesting. But, but you, you wouldn't would, know it. You wouldn't know it, yeah. no. And it's because of, um, all, of all these complex and rich notes mm. that completely uh, balance out the alcohol. You do not, this does not taste like a hot wine at all. Not at all. Mm. And so you get those Christmas spices in the mid palate with the forest floor, just like you're talking about. So forest floor in this case, and not only aroma, but it, it, it's a flavor that is evoked by the memory of that aroma. If that aroma had a flavor, that would be in the middle of your mouth. Totally. I get some of that um, pepperiness and, and minerality mm -hmm. that I never noticed in the Three Sons before. Yeah. Um, what do you like to pair the Three Sons with, Ross? Well, in this case, uh, I'm going to go back to um, our, our filet mignon. But in this oh, case, nice. what, what we do with the filet, because uh, the filet doesn't, you know, it is a very lean uh, and luscious, but lean uh, cut of meat. So we take... Uh, dried porcini mushrooms and put them in a coffee grinder and, zzz, and get it to a powder and put it on a cutting board and take this the steak and dip it into the um into the powder uh the porcini mushroom powder on one side and the other and then sear it in a tarragon butter and that with this is just awesome and takes 10 minutes so yeah that sounds incredible i don't think i can top that pairing. <laughs> <laughs> 